In this video, we're going to introduce you to geometry and create a floor and a ceiling for our level. Let's get started. Geometry is basically a way to build up stuff from lines, edges, vertices, basically the building blocks of meshes, but doing it inside the editor. It's not intended for super fancy stuff. It's intended more for blocking out your level and for temporary positioning of things. One of the nice parts about it is you could actually create something in your engine, in the editor, pull it out into something like your 3D content creation software, edit it some more, and then bring it right back in. Let's get started. Our modes window over here has a geometry section, and this is what we're going to work with. This is our basic geometry. Now, even though these have different names, these are all technically the same thing, just with a different template applied. Let's go ahead and put on a ceiling. Oh, it should be the easiest. We'll take a box and drag it in. And you notice, like everything else, it tries to snap. Let's try to get to snap at the top part right here. And you'll notice it snaps, boom, perfectly. Now, our box itself is going to have a bunch of options. And let's click on our box and look at our different options right here and oh, it's got the sky sphere i locked this okay so if you lock this like i did go unlock it because that was not the right thing to do that basically locks the detail panel to one item and if you notice i don't get any options anymore that was silly okay so here's our box brush let's go ahead and name the ceiling and do we want to keep let, let's do the ceiling room one let's go ahead and make two different ceilings we'll call this one ceiling room one and it's going to cover this entire top area. Let's go ahead and while we're here, for organization purposes, and this is annoying while it opens every time. Oh, these are our walls. These, oh, we should probably fix these. So that wall and this wall, let's select the first one, select the second one. These should have been in our first room. So we'll move those in. And then these four, yep. Should be in our second room. There we go. Now we've got things organized again. Back to our brush. This is ceiling in room one. Let's drag it up to the top and let's start working on it. Our brushes are pretty cool. Basically, you have the shape. This is why I meant by these are just templates. You could actually change this after you've started into another one, like it from a box to linear stairs to a tetrahedron. We're going to go back to a box, which is a cube builder, and then you basically adjust the size. You can drag individual parts, or we can use these numbers here to resize. And I'm going to use the numbers. Let me move this box with our top view roughly into the center of our room. We can use this to move it roughly in the center, and we'll go with something like that. Now we know that we have three walls that are 400 length, so 1200 is our approximate width. And if we move this over, We'll find, well, what do you know? Look at that. I actually got that correct. This wall is 400, 400, 400. So this allows us to make a 1200 width perfect. Now we do have the other one. We have 400, 400, 400. But keep in mind, we have this little section here as well. But let's go ahead and try that anyways. 1200. And we'll find where our box sits. We'll move this to organize it. And we'll see where it sits. Okay. So... Because we're covering the little bit of our extra wall here, which if we look at these, we'll notice it's 20. If you look at the approximate size, it's 400 by 20 by 300. So we have 20 for our thickness here, and then another 1200 for the length of the wall. So let's go ahead and change this to 1220. And of course it resizes on both sides. So we'll go move this up. And you'll notice we now cover our entire item. If we were to go back to perspective, you notice we actually have what looks like a roof on the top. Now, of course, you need to decide if you want this to go into the next room at all or if you want this room to be covered. We're just going to go like this because, hey, it works. Our thickness is a bit much. Let's change this to something like 20. Well, we're going in 10s. Let's go with 30. And we'll notice we have 30. We can use our end key, and you'll notice it is not snapping down. It's not snapping down because... It can't go to a solid surface. We have these different edges here. But it's easy enough because we're using multiples of 10. We can just move it down. 
until we get to the right one. And you'll notice here we don't have the right one because we have an off by five error it looks like. We'll go ahead and go back to our left and we'll look at it. And we'll notice we are off. We cannot do this exactly. So there's a couple options. We can change this to 40 and you'll notice it now fits. Or you can change your snapping to something like five and then fit it in. Let's just go with 40 because why not? Actually, we technically we could even go with 20. We'll go with 20, why not? We got 20 for the wall thickness. We'll go with 20 for the other thicknesses. There we go. There's our ceiling. What do you think we could do next? Well, this shouldn't be pretty hard. Click, duplicate it down, and there we go. We now have a floor. If we go back into our room, we now have a floor and a ceiling all nicely built in. Let's go ahead and duplicate these over for our other two items. Click on our ceiling, drag it over. Now we are of course going to not be perfect here. This one is going to have an extra 20 we're going to need to cover. Let's go ahead and change this to 1240 and move it over. And you'll notice we now have a perfectly fit ceiling. Guess what we're going to do next? Drag it down. Let's go ahead and go to our left view. F to focus and zoom in, drag it down, and boom, there we go, see, now it's too low, and now it's perfect. Go back to our perspective, and we've now put on a ceiling, technically two ceilings, and two floors, and if we were to go through our entire level, you're going to notice we now have our basic room all set up and ready to go. Of course, it looks like crap, we haven't textured it, we haven't lit it, we haven't done any of the fun stuff yet, but we have our basics. Let's go ahead and add in a few more props. We'll add in some stairs, and then I'll show you the first part of why we want to change our lighting. Let's do the lighting part first. So you may have gotten annoyed at this point, and if you've changed your lighting mode already, that's perfect. That's exactly what you should do. Change it when you need to. If not, we're going to change it now. We're going to change from lit to unlit, and you'll notice, boom. All of our shading goes away, our shadow issues go away, and we can actually see everything inside. By what I mean is, let's look in here. Lit, well, this is a pain in the butt, and unlit, or unlit, not wireframe. We can now actually see everything properly, and we can place everything. And we're going to be able to position all of our stuff. We're good. Let's put some stairs in. Now, the nice thing is, we have stairs built in right here. We can just drag and drop linear stairs in. We use our rotate to rotate it. Let's go ahead and move it. Let's move it out. So we're going to want to move it with these two selected. And then just look at our wall for when we have it flush. And there we go. Click on our stairs, move it again. And we'll go here. Now, if you ran into an issue where you're using BSP and you accidentally click more than once, let's say we click here and then we click again, and you no longer can move, You've gone into the BSP geometry editing mode. These items are not solid like static mesh. These are have edges, these have vertexes, and they have faces or polygons that you can actually edit. So if you actually click too many times, you're going to go into our editing mode. And if you want to get out, just click and click back. We will play with the editing mode later, but for now, if you get stuck, just drop back out and click again. Now our stairs have a small problem. They're not tall enough. Let's drag this out and look. And one thing is nice, because again, this is a template, we can change some things. Our step, length, height, width, and then number of steps. Let's go and drag this up. And it looks like, whoop, we can't see it, so that kind of doesn't help. There we go. So how many did we actually need? Whoa. It looks like 16 or 16 too much. No, it looks like, or is that too much? Nope, 16 is too much. So we'll go in here, we'll type in 15. And 15 is possibly right? I think so, I think it's just off by one. Move it over. And in this case, we'll go into our left view, focus, we'll look. We will see that we have our wall here. And here's our stairs, we'll move it over. Now they're flush. And we'll look, and there we go. We have our stairs we can now go down. And of course, we want to center this. Oh, it looks like I got it centered perfectly. But you could always go to your top view, focus, 
And then look, here's our center over here, and we can of course move it as needed. So I think I, I had it centered the first time, right? Is that center? Oh, well, let's see what's that center. Whoops, wireframe, perspective, and we'll call that close enough to center. It looks good to me. Okay, so now we have some stairs, and we have some floors, and we have some walls. Let's actually test this out. Now we've gone a few videos and we haven't tested this out and let's actually see how this plays out. I knew what I was going to design in the first place because I did this already. But if you don't, you may want to play test more often and we're going to go ahead and do that now. Our player start is where our player starts. It's just as simple as that. By default, because we're using the template, there's a player built for us, which we'll cover. And there is some game mode set up, which we'll cover. And basically the game project right now is set to spawn in a third person character when we start the game on any available player start. Now, by default, we had a player start and it's right here. If it's not here, go ahead and find it and we're going to move it. Move it however you want and let's put it in our front room. And of course, like any other object, we can manipulate it. But you'll notice this really funny blue arrow here that we can't select. That blue arrow represents the forward direction when you start playing the game. So let's go ahead and rotate so that arrow goes forward. And now when we start, our player will start here and go that way. Like other objects, we can go ahead and snap this to the floor. So if we were to end, we'll snap to the floor and our character will start on the floor. And let's move it back a little bit and we're ready to go. Up here on our toolbar, we have our play options. If we click on the down arrow, we can change the different ways we're gonna play. Selected viewport is the standard normal way. It basically will start and we're gonna play right here. We'll hit play, and now we're started inside of here. You'll notice a few things. First of all, our lighting is back, and we have an error that says lighting needs to be rebuilt. Well, this is expected. If we hit escape, we'll quit playing in our editor. These modes up here are only for the editor. They're not for when we're actually playing. It's for when we're working with it. Let's hit play again. And we'll look around with our mouse. And we'll move with our WASD keys. And you'll notice our character can run. Go through the door. He can get lost in the shadows. If I was to go out, I'd start falling. <laughs> but you'll notice our actual level itself. It works. We have collision. Our character can move around. He can technically jump and hit his head. Let's go over here and jump. And we're good to go. We have the basics of our level. Now let's see about working with external assets. Let's say, for example, we wanted to add a ceiling. Well, there's two different ways we can do this. I'm going to cover both of them. The first one is doing it in game. Brushes have two modes, additive and subtractive. Additive is what we're using now. It adds to the world. Subtractive basically will remove from the world from other geometry. Let's take this ceiling right here and let's grab a box and drop it on top. Boom, we have a box. Now let's take this box and move it down so it intersects. So now we have a box that's basically going inside of here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. I'm going to make it 500 by 500. I'm actually going to make it thinner. I'm going to make it only about 50. So we don't really have this huge thing. Let's take our box and move it down a little bit. You'll see it's now in intersecting. There we go. So we have our box and our box is in our box. If we change our type to subtractive, we're now going to see a giant hole. What we've done is basically said, okay, make this box. It makes a giant box. Now after that, we've created this smaller one and we've said, okay, make this box and subtract it from whatever is before it and it subtracts it, and it makes a giant hole. So if we were to play, you now see a giant hole and you actually see a bunch more light coming in because our sun can come in. And that's because we have a giant hole in our ceiling. Now this is nice and useful, but let's say for example, it's not quite what you want and you want to be able to make some modifications. But those modifications you really can't do in here. Well, you could go into your content creation software. For example, I use Moto, and then you could create something based on your best guess of size, bring it in and hope it works. Or 
you can actually take anything, any of your meshes inside the engine and take them out, work on them and bring them back. And we're actually going to do that. So what we're going to do here is let's click on the second one and let's make another, we're going to make another um, ceiling light, but we're going to do it outside of our program. But we want this to be the size. Brushes are not intended for permanent use. You want to convert them into static meshes. Meshes are better performance. That's why these are static meshes and these still say brushes. So what we want to do is take our brush. We'll go into our settings, into our hidden menu, and we have an option for create static mesh. What this will do is we click on it, ask us where to put it. We're going to put it in our content. We're going to call this, this is what, room to ceiling? We'll call it SM underscore room to ceiling. This will stand for static mesh, room to ceiling. And we'll create it. Now you'll notice, well, you should hopefully notice nothing different. But if we were to click on this item now, we'll notice it's now a static mesh. And if we go into our content, we'll now have a new item called static mesh. And you'll notice the size 1200 by 1240 by 20. And it's an actual item that's in our scene and we can actually edit. Now that we have an item, let's go ahead and take it out, work on it, and bring it back. Right clicking on any of your meshes or any of your items for the most part will open up a menu. And you have some specific things called asset actions. These will be specific to the item type. For static mesh, we care about export. We'll choose export. Where I'm going to go to my desktop to my temp folder and we're going to have this one save out as an FBX file because I want to use an FBX file. Stack mesh room to ceiling FBX and we'll go ahead and save it. Now we have an FBX file on my desktop. I'm going to fire up Moto. Now I am not an artist. I am horrible with art and modeling so I'm not going to do too much in here. I'm just going to show the workflow. What I'm going to do is now open up my model, my stack mesh room to ceiling in my digital content creation software, which is Moto in this case. And then we now have it in there for editing. You'll notice it brings it in. We have a mesh that it created. Now, because of the way that Unreal Engine uses the up axis, if we pull back up Unreal Engine and we look, we'll notice that the Z is up. A lot of content creation software uses Z to represent forward and Y to be up. Due to that, when you export it, it's going to go ahead and bring in this extra modifier that basically makes the up axis converted for the editor program we're working in. It's something to keep in mind. I'll show you what's going to happen when I export this back out and something you'll have to deal with usually the first time. But regardless, we now have a model inside my editor and as you can see I'm horrible with playing with my editor and we can do anything we want in here. If I was to remember how to model properly split I could do something in here. I honestly can't but here's a cool thing. Let's just grab a cube and I'm going to make a cube. Let's make it zero, zero, zero and let's make it 100 centimeters, 100 centimeters, and 100 centimeters. Yep, 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 that's good enough. And we'll go and drop my tool. And there we go. I've, I've gone ahead and changed my modification, and I now have a little cube stuck in the middle of it. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to export it out as an FBX file. And I'm going to save this back out, and we'll call this one my ceiling modified. And we'll go ahead and minimize this and now I'm back in my engine. Now I've gone ahead and I've created something and I want to bring it into the engine. Well how do we do it? You can either drag and drop it from an external program or use the import option. Let's go ahead and create a new folder called meshes and inside this folder I'm going to import content. So I can do right click import asset or import here. And when you choose to import, it's going to ask you, what do you want to import? Now you have all the option types. This is how you can get anything into the game. This is how you get your textures, your models, your sound, your audio, your data files, anything. This is how you import it. Let's go and import our modified ceiling. 
Now for a mesh, it's going to ask me a bunch of options. Is it a skeletal mesh? As in, is it a animation? Does it have a skeleton? Should it make collision? Should it offset it or make the scale different? Should it change the pivot point? I mean, there are, here, let me open up both of them. Here are, and the miscellaneous, here we go. Uh, you have all of these options that you can change. For the most part, these are specific to your workflow if you're going to need to change them, and you'll know if you need to change them. For me, what I'm going to do is just import using my default settings. I want to give the ceiling a collision. I don't have anything special in here. I have no materials assigned to it. I have no special section. So actually I'm going to not import materials and not import textures because this is just a generic model. And I'm going to go ahead and generate light map UVs and import. These are all settings you'll play with later. Now, if you get any errors, they will pop up in your message log. Like for example, this one says, uh, degenerate tangent bases result in correct shading. Like I said, I'm not a model artist. Things break for me all the time. That's just how it is. Once you have your mesh imported, hopefully from a professional artist, and you get no errors, you can now do whatever you want with it. It works just like any of our other meshes. We can drag and drop into our scene, and we have our modified mesh. Now, if you remember, I told you the different Y up or Z up axis is. That's why it has a conversion here. Because I chose just to simply export out my file, my mesh, without using my conversion, that's why you'll notice the exported version looked like this, and my modified version looks like this. It's something to keep in mind. It's one of those little things that you have to deal with with different content creation softwares, but all we're showing now is how to get a model out of our system and back into our system. So let's say I wanted to replace this. I could delete that. Whoops, let's not delete that. Let's actually go ahead and let's replace it. We've already talked about that, right? Let's go ahead and delete that one. We'll click on our ceiling. I'll click on this. I'll go ahead and to replace it and it boom, it's replaced it. Obviously it's not rotated, right? We'll go ahead and rotate it like that. And there we go. We now have this, which is a brush, and we have this, which is a model that I went ahead and exported out and brought into my system. And as you'll notice, it's a complete model. I've got different materials assigned to it, which we'll cover later, and it's ready to go. Now back to this one. When I mentioned that brushes are not meant to be in production, they're meant for temporary use, what you should do in this case is we want to keep this, but I don't want to do anything with it outside of here. So I want to go ahead and convert this to a stack mesh and use this. We'll go ahead and create stack meshes. We'll go to content and this one is going to be, well, we got stack mesh, room one ceiling. And we'll create the stack mesh. And you'll notice we have a problem. Well, where'd our hole go? Let's go ahead and undo this. Control Z will undo my creation. And let me delete the mesh that I created. Now we're back to where we started. Keep in mind, like I said, these brushes, and actually here's a, oh, that's my fuller brush. These brushes are not modifying. They're basically working in order and they are affecting other geometry. So this brush gets drawn and then this brush gets drawn. But when this one's drawn, it says, hey, just remove anything I'm at from the world, any other geometry. So if we want to keep that hole, we just need to select both. Now that I have the outer brush and the inner brush selected, we can go ahead and create. And we'll go ahead and create this one ceiling. Hey, that's cool. I kind of got a decent name there, but we're going to call it SM room one ceiling. And we'll go ahead and create. Now you'll notice we now have our new mesh, which is right here, stack mesh, and we have our hole in it for our ceiling. And it's all one solid piece now. Let's go ahead and modify our floors, and we'll go ahead and create stack meshes out of our floors to keep everything nice and clean. So we'll do SM, uh, this is room one floor, and then we'll go over here, and we'll do create stack mesh, and we'll do SM room two floor and create. And there we go. If we look through here, we have no more brushes. It's easy to check. 
we can do search and type in brush and we'll actually find our stairs are a brush okay well then we should probably fix that i forgot about our stairs but hopefully you know what we're doing creating a brush my content meshes stack mesh stairs create there we go now we have no more brushes and everything in our scene is a static mesh static meshes are better performance you really want to use brushes for laying out or creating temporary things for testing converting them into static meshes when you are done is the best and well the best option you should do let's go back into our lighting and we have crap for lighting so we really want to work on this and that's what we're going to do next we've learned to take our basic system we added in some brushes we learned the brush system we learned how to get meshes out of our system and then back into our system we've learned the importing and then now we're going to move on to lighting